Howdy folks, it's Esten with another audiobook review. Let's get started. So today's book is Part-Time Gods. Um, it's another book by Rachel Aaron. Uh, it's in the, the DFZ series that she's been writing, book two. And it's narrated by Emily Zeller. Um, so this book got pretty great reviews. So we got, the, for the book side of it, it's 4.5 out of 5. For the narrator, a full 5 out of 5. And the overall is 4.66. So let's dive into each part, starting with uniqueness. So on the side of uniqueness, um, this is in a, uh, a genre that's been growing over the past couple of years. Um, I believe that it's commonly referred to as um, modern fantasy. Um, essentially, the concept is is that the whatever you know book it is, the magic system is taking place in in the current world or a world that's very similar to ours, or um, that you know the magic system is like somehow invaded the world. Anyways, um, and, and that's a that's what we have with this book. Um, the you know, not too distant past, something different had happened from what's in our current world, and and now there's magic. Um, I don't want to reveal any or too many things if you hadn't read book one, um, but by book two, that's um, a pretty accepted thing. Um, and in fact, there was a whole other series that you probably would have wanted to read before jumping into this book. Um, but the uh, you know the the genre isn't ultra unique. It is fairly new, um, over, you know, but, you know, like 10 years new, you know, not like this year new. <laughs> um, I will say the thing that I felt like was the most unique about this book was that there wasn't just one integrated magic system. Um, sometimes the, uh, the magic systems tied together, but there were like three or more unique magic systems in this book. Um, that were independent of one another. And so that's something you don't see a whole lot of times. Um, and we'll get to a little bit as to why that might be. But um, so there's, you know, multiple magic systems. They do interconnect um, occasionally. And, um, and that brings a little bit of uniqueness. And so I gave it a four and a half out of five. Um, I considered a four, um, but uh, the book felt unique enough to me that I gave it a four and a half. So on to character development. So character development was pretty good in this book. Um, the main character did grow in strength. In reality, you know, the main character started at a, you know, X power level and then had a, had a change in how, you know, she views power and how to do magic and there are some kind of wow moments, but effectively she was just trying to get back to the same level of power that she had previously, um, but being able to control it better. So her control over magic became better, um, and the way she went about it was a lot more in tune with her, her personality, or the way that she, she works. And so I wouldn't say that like, there was a ton of like, character growth in this particular um, section, um, she was dealing a lot more with like her financial needs. One place that she did grow a lot though was her her personal development. Um, from the beginning of book one all the way, you know, halfway into this book, she had a very specific mindset for like her goals, what needed to be accomplished, what needed to be done. And um, she never really challenged that. She just left that the way it was. She just believed what she believed. And in this book, that really gets challenged for her, and um, it kind of leaves her in a place where she's trying to decide if she's making the right decisions, like, you know, um, how far do I extend this? Like, is this just something I, is this just a daddy issue, or is this like a, you know, everybody issue? Um, and so really challenging her own, you know, thoughts and beliefs. You know, rather than that, she changes her mind. Like, the, the process of challenging and challenging it again um, um, helped the character grow a little bit more round. You know, so it wasn't just, 
your average character that's like, this is the journey I'm going on, and I will continue to be on that journey until forever, until it's done. Um, you know, there was a lot of twists in there that really uh, threw the main character for a loop. And so I gave it a four and a half out of five. Um, the personal development was really good. Like the strength magic-y development was okay. Um, it wasn't, um, it wasn't ultra impressive. There was like, the wow moments was just more like, oh, well, that's not messed up anymore. That's great. <laughs> um, secondary characters is where this book really shines. Um, so the, the secondary characters in this book, they all have their own backstories. They have, I mean, they could be their own characters in different books if, if you know, they wanted to go, if the, you know, author wanted to write that direction. And, and they didn't always agree with the main character, right? Like, so the main character has, like, some people on their side and um, they're friends with and they agree most of the time, even they don't always agree with them. But there's some really good round opposition characters that, like, they make decisions and it makes sense why they made those decisions and you really kind of have to struggle with with those individuals like whose side am I going to be on? Am I going to be on the main character side or not? Um, and, and that kind of roundness really brings a book to life and so I gave uh, the secondary character section a 5 out of 5 so um, that's worth it for sure. Um, and now onto the magic system. So the magic system, I docked at a point, so I have a four out of five for it. Um, and this is one that is going to be very, like, <laughs> uh, you, could, you could easily argue this point. But for me, the magic system was more of a plot device. It wasn't like a, it wasn't the focus. It, you didn't spend a huge amount of time discussing the intricacies of it. It was just a thing that you used to accomplish a task to move on to the next part of the book that wasn't focused on magic, right? And so um, a really good example of book, a book like this is Lord of the Rings, right? So, you know, things happen, Gandalf does stuff. You don't really talk about how or why he was able to do that. He just was able to do that, right? And so um, we learn a little bit more about the magic system beyond what you would hear in Lord of the Rings, um, but it is really more of a, a device to move the character along in the story and not like the focus of the book. Um, and so I gave it a four out of five, but it is a really cool magic system. You know, it's not like, you know, a two or a three where you don't learn anything about the magic system. And um, like you do learn some about it and it's really cool in the sense that like there's multiple magic systems, they work, you know, there is some interconnection in between them. Um, and, uh, you know, that adds some complexity to it, but I would really like to get a little bit more in depth into it. Um, and we didn't get that in this book. Um, and so four out of five is what it got. So now onto the narration. So um, the narration was pretty impeccable. Um, I have heard better narrators, but, um, but they also got five out of fives on all their categories, like this one did. So <laughs> um, starting with dynamic voicing. So, um, the narrator for this book was very expressive and is what was so great about it was that and I'll get a little bit into this when I get to the vocal cast but even for the main character the the ability to show expression and range of of emotions was top notch and then that got carried over to the secondary characters and there were fairly there were there were a couple of different secondary characters that were um they were supposed to have Korean accents. And I don't know a Korean accent when I hear one, um, but I believed it sounded like a Korean accent. And the thing that I thought was great about it is that not everyone that was supposed to have a Korean accent sounded exactly the same. They had a similar cadence, a similar way that they talked, but they were very uh, unique. And But this, the key thing is the narrator was able to provide a dynamic range for each character with a specific type of accent so like they didn't all sound the same even when they were changing their ranges and so I um you know even at like two different happy Korean people sounded different two different sad Korean people sounded different 
Um, and I feel like that's that's impressive, you know. Um, and uh, so, you know, five out of five for dynamic voicing, very capable narrator in that field. Um, onto the vocal cast. As you can tell, I was very excited about the vocal cast um, for very similar reasons. So even if we ignored the uniquely accented characters, everyone had a unique voice. Um, you could tell who they were immediately when you know they were being talked about, um, and, and that you know is all it takes. And but you know it wasn't just that, right? The the narrator was able to like take unique accents for each individual person of a particular dialect and that I don't know maybe that's something this narrator is a specialist at I don't I don't know but did a great job and so five out of five for vocal cast there isn't anything it's nothing I could have asked for better than that um, on to the the extra information so for age rating I would say 18 and above um, I would have probably said high schoolers and above but there is some mature content in there. There's a little bit of sexual content. Um, doesn't go into huge detail, um, but it, it is enough that I feel like it, 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 would, it should be restricted to a mature audience. Um, and yep, that's that. Um, humor, I think that it was very humorous. Um, the, some of the side characters add some humor to them, which good side characters do, but um, the main character probably wouldn't agree. There's a lot of serious and intense moments um, and sad moments in the book, but I, I feel like there was enough humor that it was more humorous than serious, um, at least from the outside perspective. Romance, you know, I mentioned that there was some, you know, sexual content, and, and so there is. <laughs> there is some romance as well, um, which a good book. Uh, with sexual content would have. Um, it's not just about the sex, it's about what leads up to it, the people that are connected, how the relationships are building. Um, it's a little bit chaste in the beginning, they don't talk about it a whole lot, it does start to grow and develop. Uh, but yeah, so the romance is, uh, there's some romance in this book, and I, I have a feeling there'll be more romance in the next book. Um, there was just a, a touch of it in this one. Action. So for action, it was actually a little bit less than what you would imagine out of a fantasy book. So um, this series is more about the main character and her struggles and like what she's trying to accomplish um, and grow in independence and things like that than it is about like fighting and and kicking butt. And um, and that's fine. The book is great. Um, there is some action. It is just not the point of the book. And so um, just thought I would note that. You know, with that in mind, obviously there's not going to be a ton of gore either. Um, there are a few things that are noted in the book that are a little bit gross per se, um, but not anywhere near enough that I would call it a, a, a gory book. Um, just a couple of notes. And then, um, as far as engagement goes, I feel like the book was highly engaging. And so I feel like it was engaging all the way through. Um, Every time you turn around, you think you know what's going to happen, and they hook you back in with another, you know, detail. Um, and and so I had a hard time putting this book down. And so, yeah, it, it was fantastic. Um, once again, overall was 4.66. The book itself was 4.5, and the narrator was a 5. And that's it. Um... Like, subscribe, comment, let me know if you disagree or agree. Um, narrators and authors, feel free to get in there too, you know. Um, maybe I took something differently than you intended it to come out, right? Um, and so feel free to, to disagree. <laughs> um, you wrote the book. Um, in addition to that, let's see here, Audible, that's where I get all my books from. They have a, you know, a free month, I left a link for that, you can get to it. Um, I find it to be one of the cheapest ways to get audiobooks of any size, and so um, there are ways to get free books, uh, but it's harder to sometimes get new books free, and, um, and I listen to a lot of new books. So, anywho, in addition to that, I use supplements. Um, I feel like it's, in this day and age, it's, it makes it easier to stay healthy. And so I'll leave a link to some supplements uh, below. Um, 
My favorites are this uh, shake mix that New Age has, and so I'll leave a link for that. Um, and I'll leave links for other stuff in, in future videos, but that's the one that I use like literally every day. So um, even if it wasn't for like health reasons, it's easier to do that for lunch than it is to, to make or have lunch available. And so, yep, um, that's everything. You guys have a good day, and thank you for watching. Bye.